Introduction of waves. Learning objectives. Understand the wave definition in physics. Be familiar with the vocabulary and terms involved in this lesson. And identify parts of a wave. What is a wave in physics? Wave is a periodic oscillation that propagates through a median or a space carrying with it energy from one place to another. Median is defined as the material at which a wave propagates through, can be gas, liquid, or solid. For gas, uh, an example of gas is the air, the liquid, water, and solid, wall, ground, etc. To illustrate how a wave is a periodic oscillation, Let's use this example. If you throw a pebble into a pond, ripples spread out, creating circular waves traveling through the water. So the water here is the median. How do we study waves? By understanding how a wave is generated, by identifying its pattern, by relating its pattern with something familiar to us. And these are the vocabularies and terms for this lesson. Oscillation, periodic motion, repetitive motion, everything, all these words in this box, they have the same meaning. Likewise, equilibrium line, resting line, resting position, they are all synonyms. Complete cycle wavelength is represented by a Greek letter lambda. They all have the same meaning. Amplitude, maximum displacement, and energy, they are all related. I will be using for this lesson the terms propagates and travels. They, they mean the same way. Median, space, or vacuum. Those are terms that also we are going to be using in this lesson. Crest is the highest point of a wave and trough is the lowest point of a wave. How does wave carry energy? Let's use some examples. Sound energy, sound waves. So this is a sound suppression system of a launch pad to reduce the acoustical levels during a rocket launch. So the sound waves, they can um, affect the environment, the living animals, uh, living creatures around um, the area. So this will reduce the sound energy. Ocean waves. So this, this picture shows the beach erosion caused by ocean waves, which carries energy. Seismic waves, they are caused by earthquakes. So the earthquake energy will be transferred as a wave. Radio waves is using its energy for communication. Infrared waves um, has heat energy and many other examples that we are going to cover next lesson. Wave is a periodic oscillation that propagates carrying with it energy. So you saw some examples from last slide. But we have one more statement to say here. Evolved carry matter. So what that means? To understand the last part, matter, Ask someone to hear how many times you have knocked the wall on the other side of the wall. So this is a wall. This is a listener. And this is someone knocking the wall on the other side. The listener will be able to say how many times you knock the wall. 
This is because sound energy was propagated through the wall without carrying nothing but energy. Matter was not transferred to the listener. Let's understand the periodic motion of a pendulum and how we are going to relate with our study with waves. So this is a pendulum. It's a string attached to a fixed point and we have a hanging mass or object oscillating from one point to another. Without motion, the pendulum stays at zero or resting position. By releasing this um, pendulum from this angle and uh, let it go, so this pendulum is going to move from A to B, B to A, passing through zero. So the hanging mass on object moves from point A to B, passing through zero, and then from B to A, passing through zero. So zero, it will be part of this oscillation twice, as you notice. How can we translate this to a wave? Let's see on the other slide. So here is our pendulum. So this pendulum is going to, this is at rest position, is going to move from A to B, B to A, and so on like this. Basically, this repetitive up and down motion generates a wave that travels in one direction. So that's the direction that we are going to draw a wave that is going to represent this periodic motion. This wave will move with a specific pattern, which parts can be easily identified, like this. Now we are going to determine the parts of a wave. First, let's draw two lines of symmetry on this wave and identify all parts that reflect this periodic motion. The horizontal line is called the equilibrium line or resting line, is when the oscillating object returns to its initial position, right here. The vertical line determines the vertical length of the wave. The crest is the highest point of a wave. And the trough is the lowest point of a wave. The length of a wave is commonly named as wavelength length of a wave, and it's represented by the Greek letter lambda. Wavelength can be measured between two consecutive crests or two consecutive troughs. A wavelength can be also measured between two consecutive pulses, one, two. This wave, for example, has two complete wavelengths and half of one. So we call, we say that it is the total of two and a half wavelengths. One, two and a half. The height of a wave measurement is called amplitude or maximum vertical displacement. So here we will depend on the angle of the release of the pendulum. A wave energy is measured by its amplitude. Taller the wave, more energy it carries with. And an amplitude is the distance between the equilibrium line to the crest or from the equilibrium line to the trough. The distance between crest to trough is two times the amplitude. It's important to identify the equilibrium line before measuring the amplitude. Note 
that wavelength is measured horizontally and amplitude is measured vertically. Now let's practice. Label each part, part in the space provided. So this is the wave and, uh, and we have lots of uh, letters. Let's go ahead and uh, fill those lines. So please pause this video and try before we show the, I show the answers for you. Okay, so now let's see how you did. Uh, point A is the crest. Point B is a wavelength from crest to crest. And C is the amplitude. And D is a trough. And E is also amplitude. The F is another way to measure the wavelength between two pulses, and G is the resting or equilibrium line. Second practice problems. Let's fill the blanks. Waves carry from one place to another. If you said energy, you did right. The highest point of a transverse wave is the crest while the lowest part is the trough i did not mention about transverse wave this is going to be the next lesson there is the high is the height of the wave the amplitude and five the distance from one crest to the next is the wavelength okay so pause this video again and try to answer all these questions Okay, so now let's see how you did. Below are a number of series of waves, A, B, C, and D. Underneath each diagram, write the number of waves in the series. So here we have one complete wave plus half. So if you say that we have from crest to crest here, we have just one wave, is not correct because we still have this section and this section to be add to your counting. So it will be one and a half. On the second one, you have two pulses. If you have to draw the imaginary here, the equilibrium line to determine this. So one, two. So there will be one complete wavelength. On this one, C, we have one, two, and a half. On D, we just have half. The other half will be on the other side. Now let's compare and answer those questions. A, which of the above has the biggest amplitude? So it looks like to me is A. Which of the above has the shortest wavelength? Mm, look like to me is this. C. Which of the above has the lowest, longest wavelength? Look like to me is this. Because if you make complete these, you'll be about here. So that will be the longest one. Thank you so much. And... Uh, Thank you for watching this video and complete your assignment.